I am looking at a sauna for my house, um, either two or three person. And my daughter and I, my daughter's 30 years old, um, and I use saunas regularly um, at spas, and my mom has one at her house, which oh. I'm not sure the brand she has, mm. but I wanted to make sure I had, you know, like something that's like state of the art. I don't want plastic in it because I read somewhere about plastic's not good to have in saunas because of the yeah. chemicals. Yeah. So, and I read through your website, which is very entailed. But I, my husband doesn't like to lay down the jade, the stones that you have on your website. Right. So it would have to be like a sit-in sauna. Okay. And I know you were that questionnaire I was filling out um, about dogs licking you and stuff like that. I didn't know how that addressed it. But last night when I was outside, I got bit by a million mosquitoes. So I don't know if that tells you anything. <laughs> Mm, uh, it's, it's hard to say sometimes. It dip, it's, I'm just beginning to buy scares. It just means you're eating too many bananas. I mean, your potassium's high. I mean, you know, it just totally depends. But uh, but I we're looking for wellness, for health. Um, you know, detox. I guess clean out your body. Yeah. Um. So I'm not sure. The infrared light seemed to be, you know, probably what we're looking for. And you were talking about different intensities, and I'm not really sure. You know, I'm not the sauna expert person, but I do want one for health, wellness, to clean you out, two or three person, so I'm going to let you talk now. Sure, sure. Okay, I understand. And um, any sort of, uh, like, inflammatory conditions does anybody have or, uh, like, uh, back issues, anything like that? Uh, what was it, back issues? Any inflammatory sorts of conditions? No. Okay. Did you say back issues? Yeah. Yes, we do have back issues. Okay. My husband has back issues. All right. Um, so, but yeah. I don't. Yeah, it it gives me a feel for what kind of level of like therapeutic infrared you're going to need, you know, to address sometimes more significant conditions. Um, okay, and um, so it sounds like you you all have a pretty healthy you know protocol, you know, lifestyle, which is good. And you're no know, stranger to infrared, which is good as well. Um, and uh, just, I guess you could only answer this question for yourself, but you know, uh, do you sweat pretty easily once you jump into a sauna? Uh, yes, yeah, pretty easy. I, but when I work out with cardio, um, I don't sweat as much as a lot of people who run with me. Yeah. But I do sweat. But like my husband sweats a lot quicker than I do. Okay. All right. And. Um, Okay, so yeah, the Chi I mean, the it's interesting you brought up the both plastic and Chinese because um there is a lot of that actually out there. Um probably in about 90% of the saunas. Um which is pretty much the majority of the market. And uh mm. the plastic uh is actually found more in um in the uh carbon panels. Uh-huh. That's actually how they construct them. There is plastic sandwiched between fiberglass and uh and then they usually glue on polyester fabric on top of that. That's what a carbon mm -hmm. panel is. Uh -huh. and, and then they run electricity into it. Um, Do you recommend that? And then they and then they glue it to the wall. <laughs> uh, it it, it kind of makes me laugh just telling people what they're actually doing because it sounds ridiculous. Uh, but when you when you see it with the great marketing that you know these companies do, it sounds a whole lot nicer. Um, but uh yeah so I'm not really an advocate of that just from the standpoint of the glues and uh you know the plastics and all that kind of stuff in there um you know with those panelings the other thing you got to watch out for is as I said 90% of the market like the product out there the brand does come from like four main manufacturers in China so yeah. chances are you know if you picked a sauna just out of random out of a hat it would be there's a 25% chance it would be coming from one of those manufacturers um, it's mm. just that's, unfortunately it's just the dominant force in the market. Um, companies that have tried to do something alternative along the way have just had a, a hard time competing, you know. Because generally, of right. course, most of the saunas are are you know the margins are a lot better because they're mass produced cheaply. Um, so it's hard to compete with that, right? So, but right. there are still a few companies out there who are offering something different, and we kind of try to like to shine a light on, you know, who they are. Um, and uh, educate consumers. The um, you know to find like a, a good uh, 
a, a sauna that is, um, you know, really clean, well built, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you normally do get what you pay for, but right. but if you know what you're looking for, right? But a lot of these companies like to price their saunas competitively to each other. So what does that mean? You can't really tell a whole lot about price unless you know a whole lot more about the sauna, you know, the insides and outs. Uh, like I'll give you a case in point, one of the most popular saunas you probably have heard of, um, and they market probably the most and advertise the most out of any like brand. Um, they do a carbon, carbon, uh, you know, solo carbon or whatever. Um, they tack on like an extra probably $2,000 more than the competition. To kind of mm-hmm. to, and and they have a really nice sleek design, you know. They're almost like contemporary in the way they're designed, you know. They look nice, but mm-hmm. but uh, what's the conversation really about? It's about how is it actually constructed, you know? How is it put together? Not what it looks like. How is it put together? Right. And therapeutically, what what value does the emitters have that's emitting the infrared, you know? And so they jack up the price way up there. A lot of companies do that, and then some. Companies are, are actually deserve to be around that higher price point. So, like Therasana, for example, a lot of people don't know they're one of the oldest companies out there, uh, and I think one of the best, um, just therapeutically in the construction. Um, and and they're they're on price on par with uh, a brand that's extremely popular, but I, I consider it the other end of the spectrum in terms of quality. So you can feel confused. The good end of the spectrum? Yeah, they're both the good end and, and is priced the same as more in the low end in terms of quality. So it's very confusing is what I'm saying out there. I um, know it's confusing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. we're like, what the heck? Thank God you made this website. You know, where else am I going to get, you know, at least some un- unbiased feedback? Um, so, you know, I don't really care if, you know, what sauna you get. I don't even care if you get it from me. Um, but I would say that most people usually do end up going with our recommendation um, because they, they feel that they can at least trust what we're saying. So I'm totally transparent. The way that we actually have figured out this mess is not just sitting in each one and doing our own tests, but we also requested manufacturer specifications for all mm-hmm. from all different brands. Those specifications were mainly for a couple of things. It was how was the sauna constructed and what kind of emitters are you using, and what were those like? What were the test results of that in terms of infrared or micron output? Right. Because um, that's really all that matters. I mean, this is a very simple product. It's a wood box with some infrared emitters on it. That's all it is. Right. You know. Right. I mean? This is not supposed uh-huh. to be hard to figure out, but companies want to keep you your education level at a certain level, so you can't figure out <laughs> that what they're selling you is not worth the price. So, um, so in general, uh, carbons, 90% of them plus, um, are all made in China. Uh, now, some of them, uh, you know, get the, the framing from China and then put in Japanese heaters. Mm-hmm. Um, the difference between Japanese emitter carbons and regular Chinese carbons is the Japanese emitters just have, don't have the wiring going through all the emitter. Mm-hmm. The panel, which basically means it's just got one of the lowest EMFs. Um, Do you want? I didn't know if you wanted low EMF or not. I really didn't know what that meant. Electromagnetic frequencies are harmful frequencies to the body. They're microwave frequencies, like living so under power want. lines, being next to a cell phone tower, talking on your cell phone, being in front of a computer all the time. Uh, so are, that's bad. Okay. Exactly. So these most saunas used to be pretty toxic with EMF, but they clean. A lot of companies started to stay competitive, and they really cleaned up their saunas in terms of EMF, uh, because that's what consumers demanded. However. What they didn't clean up is um, the off-gassing that comes off some of these panels because they're, you know, they're gluing on veneers on top of pine board or particle board. That's still a very right. common practice for probably 90% of the saunas. It keeps the weight down on the sauna. It's you know a fraction of the price to put pine board in the middle. And right. you can actually tell this. All you got to do is ask for a top-down view, like a cutaway without the roof of the uh-huh. sauna. And if you kind of zoom in, and you can kind of see like an off discoloration. Um, there's like a sandwiched between the veneers so that you can only see at the top of the sun. Does it make sense with the roof off? You can see there's uh-huh, like iron or something white. That's one of the few ways you can tell other than, you know, 
breaking your sauna, you know, and trying to see. Or you look at the side door when the door opens. And if the side door has, like, a flat piece of veneer that's kind of, like, um, covering the side panel of the door, uh -huh. then you know it's covering up as an, another piece of wood sandwiched between that door. Or sometimes some companies are sneaky enough is they'll give you a real solid door of, of one kind of wood, and then the rest of the sauna is not the case. So, um, so there's, like, all these little tricks. It's ridiculous. Um, Am I an advocate of carbons in general? Um, I mean, not really um, for a couple reasons. I mean, it depends on what you're looking to achieve. It sounded like you were like really into detoxing and sweating. You've had a lot of experience in saunas. Um, yes. You know, you're going for, you, you can handle much more intensity. Um, I usually recommend carbons to people that, you know, are looking to relax uh, every day. They usually use it almost every day, either summer or winter. They don't, and they just want to kind of relax in there and get kind of a little bit of the therapeutic benefits, maybe read a book, maybe take a nap, I don't know, um, you know, watch TV through it um, and use it every single day. But if you're getting, like if you're having a pretty intense detox experience, which is really, really therapeutic, you don't want to first of all be using it every single day. Um, mm -hmm. And then second, you know, you're usually, you know, you're there, you know, with one thing in mind, which is like really rejuvenating your health. Um, you can right. you can set the I mean the the important factor to know is that um, carbon it has like a forty percent efficiency rating so it takes it only converts forty percent of the power that's coming from your outlet into actual infrared um, ceramics are somewhere around ninety percent so um, okay so what is that so you recommend that? either the ceramic rod probably first choice. And then the combo after that? Rods I do not recommend anymore because okay. um, they that's old technology. This, this, the first ceramic saunas were rod saunas. If you remember, a lot of them, people were getting burned and having grill marks on their back. You know, I, um, I remember in the very beginning that when I, I'm, thir I'm 52 now, and I remember when I was young that they used to put a eucalyptus into the coal thing to make the eucalyptus smell throughout it. You know, they had like a water thing where you sprayed, took your hands and sprinkled it. Yeah. And I remember that like years, and I really haven't seen that too much since I've been in a sauna in establishments anymore where they even have those cold looking things where you sprinkle eucalyptus juice on it or whatever it was. Yeah, that was way you're back You're probably when. too young. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. you're probably too young. <laughs> probably. <laughs> now is that your business partner or Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, we worked together. We uh, did all the research for the site over over a few years. Uh -huh. um, I was just wondering. I I liked your website a lot, Alex. So, but like you said, I'm very confused and I want something for wellness and we probably won't use it every day. So, you know, if there's something that has the uh, um better uh infrared lights you know, whatever the conversion where carbon only has forty percent. You know, what do you you think that I I'll can tell you, have? I'll, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what's an important point is the goal with sitting in an infrared sauna is to try to get you know infrared wavelength in that magic you know ideal wavelength, right? That we all right. know about. They come from research studies that show you know this is what the body emits. And this is, you know, a healthy body emits this kind of level of micron, this type of wavelength. So we all shoot for that, you know, all the different brands out there. Um, a lot of them fall short. Um, and so without going into all the science of that, unless you really want to know, um, of why most brands fall short, uh, the goal of having just an efficiency or an emissivity, better emissivity with ceramic um, if you think about it, if you're converting more of that electricity, that actually gives you um, more of a range to play with in terms of setting the temperature of the emitters. Uh -huh. um, like if you only can, if you only had a range, an electrical range of 40 percent, you could only kind of, you could only change the the panel so much. They could only put out so much of a range. But if you had 90 percent, you have a greater range to set that control panel at. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is it, the, the, when the best content of infrared is usually when the panels are at their coolest or their lowest temperature. So um, if you have a better efficiency of a panel, that means you can set it at a lower temperature but still get a lot of infrared output. 
And, but if you can set a lower temperature, that means you're keeping it closer to that ideal wavelength in the, or micron range. Uh-huh. So, um, and this is also just a little a tidbit as well. Um, so this is the tricky thing. It's like these emitters have to heat the whole cabin, and you want them to stay cool enough so that they put out the ideal micron range. That's, that's almost like a double-edged sword. It's kind of hard to do. Most companies don't know how to do that, or they have their own technique for achieving that. Um, but ceramics seem to do better with that because they're more efficient. They heat up the, ca the cabin easier, um, and so you can set them at a lower temperature and get a better micron range out of it. Um, it's tricky business. Um, so uh, there yeah. was a TV thing I seen. I wish I would have wrote down the name of it, but there was it was like on um, CNN or Headline News, and they had a thing on saunas last summer. And I can't remember the name of the man. Was it like Solar? And I'm not even sure if it's American made or not. But they were rating and they were saying that it had the best efficiency output, and I thought it was like solar or something, but I, I didn't write it down. And and I am an American, and I would like to buy an American product, but, you know, it doesn't have to be American, but I know I don't want, like, China. I just, my husband does electrical contracting, and there was, when the boom was going on, there was so much drywall that was coming from China that contaminated houses. I mean, it was terrible. When the houses were vacant and then they turned them back on is when it released all the toxics out of the drywall, which I don't mm. even know if you heard about the China drywall back in 2005 or six when the mm. building boom was going on. Yeah. So I just kind of had like a bad thing with Chinese products. You know, it's like I don't want anything that's going to make me less healthier, you know, while I'm trying to get healthier. So, you know, but I, like I said, I didn't write down the company's name and – I'm just going to, you know, I'm trusting you because I really like your website and that. And I just want something, I guess, to detox our family and stay healthy maybe two times a week, maybe three times a week. Yeah, there's only a few companies that are made in this country because um, it's cheaper to get them from these other places. So, and um, I can just, I can. Um, what it, would you do uh, if it was, it was for you, like you and your your family, what would you get for wellness for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I would go with my top picks. Um, you know, I, uh, I want to, I, I, I like, I like American made and I do like, um, really, really clean saunas, you know, no adhesives or glues or anything like that in there. It kind of get freaked out, you know, when you got all that heat breaking down the bonds and those chemicals constantly, you use this thing every day, you know, um, I don't, and I mean, if I'm keeping it indoors, I don't want to ruin my air, my indoor air quality with all this off gassing of chemicals. So, um, I right. like I like Heavenly Heat because they cater to that niche. You know, they build the cleanest sauna. It's just 100% poplar wood. There's nothing in between, and uh, and you know they just use screws to attach everything, as it should be. You know what I mean? Um, right. And they do it in this country. Nice basic sauna. It's a wood box, and they screw panels into it and put some windows. You know, that's I don't need a fancy sauna, um, and right. uh, and it's intense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love their their ceramic panels. They also filter the air as it comes out. So you know, we we release it's kind of gross, but we release about two pounds of toxins out of the lungs and the skin every day. Pretty gross. So that's why people's yeah. indoor air quality is so poor in their house if so they don't like, ventilate and open windows. But so they understand that you're releasing more in a sauna, so why don't we filter the air coming out of the sauna? And they also blow in uh, warmed air around the heaters from the outside, so you get fresh in there, air in there as well, which is great if you have a few people in a sauna, especially. Because right. in, a, in a closed up environment like that, you know, you end up using and breathing in each other's air quite quickly. Right. Um, so they're one of the, believe it or not, they're one of like the only companies to do that. It's not kind of ridiculous. Like it's something yeah. so basic. But that's what I'm saying is most companies don't want to really cater to that level because they want to keep their labor costs down. And they're all and they mostly care about the profit margin. Right. So um, that's why I kind of like these these companies that aren't as well known, but have been around a while. Um, this one is in. Uh, it's been around 25 years, and is in kind of like. The who's who of you know alternative healing centers, um, which I totally respect. 
Um, you know, some, some of these centers are like for centers that help people with multiple chemical sensitivities, major immune issues. Um, so I got to respect that. Um, but I, I would either go with that or I'd go with my, my personal favorite, um, which is Thera Sauna. T H E R A Sauna. Thera Sauna. I, okay, I wrote that down when you said that earlier that Thera Sauna for the head and the heat. And my other daughter, I have two daughters, and when she was younger, she's uh, 30 years old, one's 32, one's 30, is she had Epstein-Barr virus. I don't know if you're familiar with that, which is an immune uh, deficiency. And she never really, you know, outgrew that. Would that help with her too? So in, I can only go off of clinical studies. And, um, uh, I, and I can tell you that infrared light has been shown to destroy viruses, bacteria, pretty much everything in somebody's yeah. body on contact, okay? Now, the tricky thing about viruses like that is they, they, uh, are, they, 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 like, they can be stored away in the body. Sometimes the body compartmentalizes it or quarantines it, which is a good thing, you mm -hmm. know, so it doesn't become a full-blown manifest condition. But that being right. said, it, will it get rid of that, you know? I, I, I don't think she'll ever get rid of it. But yeah, I, I mean, like, oh. but as a but as a but as a helpful protocol for increasing your immune system and killer T cells and reducing inflammation, yeah, absolutely, it could help really bolster the immune system in many ways, and that could eventually I mean, help, yeah, overcome it. And she's like a over workout person. She, I've just gotten her to quit running marathons. So she runs, you know, I don't think any, too much of anything to me is not good. I mean, mm -hmm. I run 5Ks or 10Ks, kind of like a limit, you know, but, yeah. you know, I just was just thinking, you know, I mean, she's very athletic, she's outgoing, but I know she still has that issue. But I was just wondering, that's just, you know, the side thought or whatever. But it is for, you know, my husband, me, my oldest daughter, you know, my younger daughter might, you know, get in it. I don't know, but I was just wondering about it. So yeah, it's not a big no, it definitely could help. Um, and here's the thing: if you ever have any sort of sensitivities to things, or your immune system is already challenged, you just don't want to go into uh, an unclean sauna. I mean, some people that are really compromised, you know, I hear back from they can't even sit in a normal sauna, like mm -hmm. you know, that they, they come from, you know. China or a lot of these places. They can't sit in right. and have multiple sessions right. without having some sort of other than health issue pop up. Um, you know, because they're getting sick in there while they're getting the benefit of infrared, you know, kind of defeat right. purpose. Um, Counterproductive, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I, I mean, I talk about ther and Therison is my top recommendation. People think I'm, I'm biased, but you know what? If somebody else can show me manufacturer specifications for their emitters that show without a doubt that they can control you know, the micron output through the power, you know, actually control the temperature on the actual emitter, then I will be happy to, you know, talk about that other sauna and, you know, let people know about it. But no one else has yet to actually have the technology besides their sauna to actually control the power going to each emitter. It's like a, it's like a dimmer switch, right? What if you right. want to control the light output of a light in your room which is heat, that's actually infrared light, it's actually just so bright that it becomes mm -hmm. that. But if, what if you had a dimmer switch and you could control right. that, right? Well, they're right. also controlling the heat coming off that, you're also controlling the infrared output. This is not rocket science, but there's only one company that does that, and that is Therasana. And they've been doing that for a long time, and so they can keep the average temperature of the, of the emitter you know, around 100 something degrees, like around that range, which means they can control the micron output, you know? So people say, oh, you're being biased. Well, I think you're smart enough to understand what I'm saying here, that that's the only way you can really control micron output. And if you want that ideal therapeutic output the entire time you're in the sauna, you have to, you have, to have some way of controlling the temperature of the emitter. Most companies will not even have this conversation I'm having because you would then immediately question their emitter. You might even say, hey, do you have manufacturer specifications? You know what I mean? Um, right. Because n n nobody else does that. Um, so, that, I mean, that's why it is still my top recommendation. You know, most saunas you sit in, you're only getting like that ideal micron range for the first maybe minute to two minutes you sit in it, and then that's it. Because usually you get out once you're done. You don't sit there 
all the way till the end until it goes back to room temperature, do you? No. So you're only, and you don't even really get in the thing until it warms up a bit, right? Right. So actually, yep. when you step in there, you're not even getting the ideal micro range the entire time you're in there. They'll actually tell you, these companies, if you look at the small print, that it, the ideal micron range in the nines or whatever is only when the panel is at its lowest temperature. And it's at its lowest temperature within the first 60 to 120 seconds after you flip the switch. But you're not even in a sauna. That's the, right, you're that's the scam, right. and I love telling people about it, and I love talking about it on my website. Because I'm basically the only one blowing the whistle on the industry. You know, and basically telling yeah. you, How long do you stay in a sauna when you get in? Mm, I, the best way to do it is uh, short sessions. So this is exactly what I do. If you want the ultimate way to do it, you do short sessions. Ten-minute sessions. You do three sessions if you can, if you have the time. So it's 30 uh -huh. minutes social. But in between, you do things to stimulate your lymphatic system. So in between, I'll do some dry skin brushing, maybe the first time. Then the second time I get out, I just you know I'm just outside the sauna for just a few minutes. Um, then I jump on my rebounder. If you know what a rebounder is, is that a cardio machine? It's a, it's a, it's a small trampoline. So okay. they also call it a rebounder. It's a very very small trampoline. One of the a mini tramp. Okay. Yeah, like the well, you want to get a good one, and I can give you a recommendation on that. But if you get a really good one, um, then it's the best exercise for moving your lymphatic system, opening up the valves. Then you get back in the sauna, and you get you know three times the experience because your lymphatic system is actually able to move away all the toxins that you're releasing. Um, uh, do, do you cool it and then heat it again, or do you just leave it at a low temperature because you can set it with the um, thorough sauna? Uh, keep, I would just keep it at the same temperature because, yeah, I mean, if you were, let's say, using a Therosan, then, yeah, you can completely control the whole situation, so you can just leave it on. Uh, other, and then other, you, yeah. you usually set it at what you started to say, at 100 and what? I keep it at cool. Use. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it's usually just set around, like, 100 degrees. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so yeah I, want, I, want to set it, I want to set it close to... Um, it's so like, you release it, all the good rays, right? Yeah, like if you if you if you can always tell we've sat in like thirty different saunas, and when you sit in a sauna where it's where you're, the the thermostat's like hundred degrees, maybe even ninety degrees, right? It's and and you're in there and you're breaking a sweat, you know, after like right. ten fifteen minutes. Wow, that's a very very good sign that you have really good fluence, good infrared output from the from the emitters, because that means what's warming you up is the infrared. It's warming you up, not the hot temperature of the sauna. You're not walking in a traditional sauna. It's 190 degrees, and if your body doesn't sweat, you're going to die. You know, right. you're being heated up like the sun heats you up. You know what I mean? Right. It could be a cool day outside, but wow, the sun's so intense. I'm getting warmed up. That's infrared. That's what you want to experience in your sauna, and that's how you can always tell sitting in any sauna, as long as you set you know, sauna brand A at 90 degrees, sauna brand B at 90 degrees, same temperature, your your body can absolutely tell the quality of the emitters. They will, it will not lie to you. you. You'll be able to tell based on how fast you sweat. Like, oh, I sweat five minutes earlier this time. Or I didn't even sweat at all. Um, I just barely broke a sweat. You can actually tell. This is not rocket science. You know, it's infrared, right. and your body has... You know, you can sense that. So that was part of how we also tested saunas. You know, just the good. Which part. also means it's getting deeper into your muscle too, right? Exactly. So good race. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Um, as but here's the truth: if, if there's a lot of companies that just want to reveal one scam, they'll say, "Oh, ours penetrates deeper." You know, first <laughs> first of all, they have absolutely no tests. Okay, no, there's no, they have no proof. Just FYI, to back up that claim. Mm -hmm. All right. And, or say, submit that to me in writing. Oh, and by the way, if you're lying, I'll sue you. And I promise you they won't send you anything. But um, so, but, but what is true, we do know that when it is actually in the higher micron range, around the 9-ish, you know, 9-ish, 10-ish, like just somewhere right in there, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that wavelength does have a little bit better penetration depth, but honestly, not by a whole lot. And we know that from the co from the laser the therapeutic laser industry, by the way, mm -hmm. using lasers for cold laser therapy. So that's how they know that. They don't know it from researching saunas. You know it from that. Um, but th is it that much of a difference? No. Generally, in, bottom line is generally infrared is going to penetrate to almost the same amount in the body. 
Okay, mm-hmm. so mostly companies just try to confuse you and say ours, ours penetrates deeper and blah blah blah. But what what is true is the amount of infrared can be more, right? Because if you have mm-hmm. more if you have more efficiency with an emitter, right, mm-hmm. then you're getting a, a, a higher torch or more more therapeutic dose in a shorter period of time. That's absolutely true. But mm-hmm. as far as penetration, it's mostly a bunch of bullshit. They have no they have no proof right. of any of that. You go in the sun, it's going to penetrate to probably the same depth, depth when you're getting a, a tan as when you're in your sauna. Well, I teach physical education outside, so I have enough sun. <laughs> That's great because vitamin D is extremely important. You know, It sure is. And yeah. um, I even had a doctor here in town tell me that he did a vitamin D thing. He was trying to push his vitamin or his, yeah. his pills or whatever. And I listened to him, and then I went because I'm not a pill person. I don't have any. I don't take anything but multi and omega three six nine. So I went in there, and I said, you know, I want a copy of my report. And I got my report, and I was in the ideal range, and I knew I was. I'm like, why does he tell me to take these pills when I don't need them? Well, you know. <laughs> so I, uh, have, I have issues with doctors, anyways. But I mean, and he's not a bad doctor, but he wants to sell his supplements or whatever. Well, of course. They make a lot of money on the side that way. Um, but good but, for you. Yeah. I mean, vitamin, is, your vitamin D levels will put you at a lower risk in literally every known disease. I don't know if you know that. It usually reduces the risk anywhere from 40 to 70% off of any known disease or condition. So that's probably like one of the healthiest things you can do. Healthier than, yes, getting in a sauna is actually just keeping your D levels up. Um, yeah, yeah, so... And being outside, you think would help with that, don't you? Yeah, the as yeah. I mean, you got just keep getting your tests, you know, once a year. Because um, sometimes a lot of people they're out in the sun, but they're not in the ideal time of the day. You first of all, right, there morning, can't be any cloud. Second, it has to be during a certain amount of hours, you know, a certain rain, like time right. period. Second, you can't be covering up your body. Like people usually break <laughs> one or two of these rules, and they it doesn't they don't get the benefit. But right. if you're out there like 11 a.m. to 2 or 3. That's like that's really an ideal time period, um, depending on what region, of course, of the world you're in. Right. Um, yeah, we we also uh, boat a lot, my husband and I. So we're in the okay. summer when I'm off for work, we do a lot of boating, and and I do wear sunscreen too because I feel like you know the ozone layer or whatever is not. Just as get, just make sure you use just make sure you use non toxic. I mean, there were all the studies came out showing that the biggest increaser of skin cancer is sunscreen. Right. Because of what, three different. What sunscreen chemicals. do you recommend? So there, all you gotta do is very simple. Just go to uh, like Whole Foods, health food store, or any health food store. Say I need your all natural sunscreens, um, and then all you're gonna look for on there is that they have um, like zinc oxide, or uh, there's like three different um, minerals usually two different minerals that are very common. I'm forgetting the other two. But that's all you need in it, okay? You just need two or three, like one or three or whatever minerals that are. It's like zinc oxide and like two other types of minerals. Just get one of those and then just make sure the rest of the ingredients in there are just to keep your skin moisturized or whatever, to hold it on there. And that's it. It blocks out like 90-something percent when you use those natural ones. Um, and well, you don't get any of that crap in there. Just go, one of, just go well, to one of those stores. I go to Earth's Origin all the time to shop, so I'll check out their sunscreen. Next Perfect. Time yeah, I'm great store. They should, they should have something in there. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. Because if, if you're going to get skin cancer, it's from using a toxic sunscreen. It way increases huh. your risk. Yeah. Well, that's interesting in itself, too. Okay, back to the sauna. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, your first choice you said was the Thera sauna, and the second choice was the Heavenly Heat. Um, I noticed that you had said something on your website about user demos. Do you ever get any demos in no. any of those? No. I figured that. No, never, never. Uh, t- companies that have demos or returns or something are usually not doing good products or they're selling a thousand a month, you know, from some of those main Chinese right. manufacturers and of course they're gonna have some, you know, returns here and there. They'll always have something on hand. Um these companies that don't do these huge volumes and just build better quality products, it's just very rare. We do sometimes have returns and things like that on like portable, small portable things. But I mean that's not what we're looking for in this case. Um the thing I have is um we turned our um garage attached to the house into a workout room. 
and I do weights regularly, which my uh, good cholesterol is so high. They, the doctors keep telling me they've never seen good cholesterol as high as mine, which I think it's because the weights, I think. Plus, I, I do cardio, but yeah. I really think the, the weights is what does it for me. Mm. And it's going to be in a, our garage. We enclosed it and um, turning into like a little workout room in there. I still work out in the Y, too, regularly because so many machines are very expensive, yeah. as you know. Yeah. So, but um, it will be in a garage, and, you know, it's going to have air-conditioned climate control in there, which, listening to you, we need to open the windows up and let it just get natural air, too. Absolutely, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great thing because you can just open the garage door, right? Um, right, yeah, the yeah. French doors, yeah, we can open them all up. So, oh, and it's natural light. So, as far as I've a two-person sauna, there's, there's Sarah sauna. And heavenly heat, those make two and three people. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, yeah, they make yeah, no, they make a variety. What is the price difference from a two or three? I mean, in the best scenario, it would be my husband, me, and my oldest daughter. But it's probably going to be just me and my daughter most of the time using it because we're like she's a sauna nut and she's been going to my mom's to use hers, which I don't even know what brand it is. And after listening to you, it may have a lot of you know, counterproductive things going on in it, too. So, you know, I didn't know what the difference was from a two- or three-seater. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so Heavenly Heat, um, two to three. Yeah, the standard price for, like, two to three is, um, 